and he found Robert not guilty of marijuana possession by reason of medical necessity. It established within the legal framework the concept of medical necessity. And by 1991, we had 13 individuals who were receiving uh, marijuana legally for the purposes of, of medical application. George Bush Sr., who was running for re-election, didn't want to look like he was soft on drugs, and so he decided to close down the program so nobody else could get on it. He grandfathered the 13 of us in so we didn't sue the government. It's ironic when you've got something legal that everyone else could be arrested for. That's what's so bad about this fight, is that people that are sick that need the medicine aren't getting it. They're being made criminals, they're having their life in turmoil, especially if they're arrested. And it's just not right. Marijuana is, it, it elicits too many emotions in people. And probably if it, if it were called something else, it would be a, it would be a much better world. I, I used to say that if, if a scientist went into a, a, an Amazon rainforest and came out with this new plant that had never been discovered before, uh, that he, he called cannabis and gave it to other scientists and researched it, it would be hailed as, as a, a savior because it has so many wondrous, uh, wondrous properties. And it would be nice if it didn't have all of the baggage that marijuana has, if it were just simply cannabis. Uh, that would be a, a better world, I think. Good morning, Neighbor Securities. Just a moment. I'll be back. I'm a stockbroker. I'm a professional person. I handle a lot of money on a daily basis. Go for some help. I, you know, I'm a good, productive member of society. I pay lots of taxes, and I'm able to do that because I use marijuana. Yeah, I'm calling about that option we talked about. Did the check come in from Whiting today? Three, what I like about this is the diversification. Cannabis doesn't impair my ability to think, to act, to move, to do anything I need to do. If anything, I think it sharpens my decision making, especially at work, because now I'm not concentrating on my pain. Hold on one quick second. Rev. Rosenfeld? Yeah. I'll, uh, All right, I'll go ahead and take care of it. All right, bye-bye. I've got to be sharp, I've got to handle millions of dollars on a daily basis, and to do that, I need to smoke my cannabis. Everyone, yes. I want to pose a little toast and just thank you for all my family and for being here and have a great meal yeah. and thanks again. Right. Take care. Yeah. I know how beneficial it is. I know how well I am doing. I know how bad I was without the marijuana. And so I'm just so fortunate to have the medicine that I can get up and go to work every day. I can provide a living for my family. I can do all that because I have this medicine. All this is is a weed that was put on this earth and it's beneficial, it has been through centuries. Let the states do what they can. The federal government's given them no choice. And that's what's gotta be changed. It's gotta be based on a federal level. I, I feel like we will make history if we pass the Hinchy Robacher Medical Marijuana Amendment to the SSJC bill. If we pass that amendment, our names will go down in history, guaranteed. How are things going? Very well. We just got the endorsement of the American Nurses Association California. Yes. Right. Nice. nice. It's going extraordinarily well. I don't want to speak too soon and jinx myself, but I feel like we are at the tipping point here this year. And I talked to Ross, too. Ross is important because he's the chair of the Blue Dog Democrats, so he, he would be important to get. Aaron Houston, who's Director of Government Relations for the Marijuana Policy Project, um, is joining us along with Dr. Eric Vogue, um, Chairman of the Institute of Global Drug Policy, Drug Free America. Medical marijuana is a drug that works for certain patients, and that's why we have the Hinchy Rohrbacher Amendment. The real central part of this is this is incremental legalization of pot. The Marijuana Policy Project is out to legalize pot. I mean, talk to these guys at MPP. How many years have they smoked pot? Well, oh, that is just outrageous, sir. I, I resent that, and that, that is, that is a, a ridiculous ad hominem attack. I think the bigger picture is, you know, who is pushing this whole marijuana issue? Who's pushing this? 
And if you look at MPP, look at their funding. It's George Soros. It's many of the pro-legalization campaign. It's not with medical marijuana. It's with legalizing marijuana. I would ask you two questions. Number one, would you tell that cancer patient who's vomiting uh, that they that they can't use a medicine that works for them that's been recommended by their doctor? And also, sir, should they be in jail? Should those cancer patients be locked up? They are not going to jail. I don't. No. I mean, it's ridiculous. You're arguing that they should be in. That you're arguing that they should be criminalized. Are, are you saying that they should be in jail? What I'm saying is the people that provide it to them should be certainly. I think that if somebody but, wants. But that's not the law, sir. Doctor, should your cancer patients go to jail? My cancer patients don't go to jail. My cancer well, I guess they're lucky that they shouldn't go to jail, and they aren't going to jail. And I think, and unfortunately, I have to start seeing patients in about 30 seconds here because I really would like to stay on and. Oh Lord! I just got disconnected. Fuck. I live in a state that has no medical marijuana protection. I was mm, um, born mm, with um, cerebral um, um, palsy, which uh, most noticeably manifests itself in a gun um, in a severe uh, daughter and uh, the right side of my body is much um, noticeably weaker than my uh, left I have a a the stutter has got to be one of the most stigmatizing disabilities invented by God. A Photoshop printer. It won't turn on. I was made fun of through elementary school, through middle school, through high school. I got my nose fractured because I went to slap a guy who made fun of me. I tried calling you before and I get um, hung up on. Um, hello? It's very humiliating. My right arm is always very painfully tense. I went through my entire childhood in pain because I yeah, couldn't move my muscles. I am a widowed young mother with um, four children. Tristan is nine, Jade is six, Ulysses is four, and Fiona's um, two. They're amazing, and I want, I, 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 I want them to know how amazing they are and to know that I um, love them. My kids are spending the night with their grandmother. The first time I realized that mm, cannabis um, helped me 
was the was the first time I smoked it. It's been mm, three days uh, since I smoked. I am hoping to find something in Kansas City. I smoke to be the mother my children um, deserve because they're really um, cool kids. Drug use is an act of, of human misery. People take drugs to make themselves feel better or to escape. The genesis of the problem is in the consumer. And as long as there's consumption, there'll be a need for strict oversight. Because uh, without that, society certainly can perish. But for the DEA and for our partners, victory is one step at a time. When you look at it through the years, you realize that we have been victorious. And that pendulum of success is more on our side than their side. Okay, yesterday we were flying, um, flying over a ridge or a ridge line, end up being uh, at least 2,000 plants in this drainage, about three miles that way. They're all in rows underneath the brush, uh, a couple thousand plants. We're gonna come in from the southwest, we're gonna go off a little uh, cul-de-sac off of residential housing like townhomes, small homes. Be quiet going in, no talking. You know, we see anything, hand signals. Pay attention to me going in. As usual, we want to make sure that they're not in there and be covert when we get in there. If we have to chase somebody, so we're going to go and make the rest and chase them no matter how long. Secure that, and then come back. I lied. It's not 2,000 plants. It's going to be like 10,000 plants. On December 16th, U.S. armed forces invade Panama and bring to an end the seven-year dictatorship of Manuel Antonio Noriega. I got into infantry, and I really loved it. I was in battle. Probably the, the hottest situation um, was the capturing of Noriega in Panama. The Marines went in, we were fire support, and it was just brutal. 